Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Finn and today is Calf Watch 2021. So we are going to be going around feeding the calves, we're also going to be dosing them and we're going to have a check up and see how everybody is doing. So, first things first, bag a meal out of the shed to these calves here. So, we give them straw every other day. This is a day where we're not giving straw, it's just in case you're wondering. So, these are the last, well, the lads that side are still on milk, but these are the off milk. These were one of the, the last batch to come out of the shed. So, these are the youngest, not the best calves, but they're, they're there. They're tipping away nicely. So, mixture of lads there. So, we have some of the Jersey boys here. Not the best of them, but there's one. Another lad over there. This is them. Look, they're not over hectic. They're just the last batch of calves to come off milk. So, you know, where you, you'll see the house we go along when you get from the younger calves to the older calves, you'll see the difference in the quality of them change. But anyways, look, that's them. There's not much else to say. They're, they're tipping away there nicely. Near just about ready. As soon as we get a chance now, they'll be moved off here to go to paddock and ground there just beside the house just because they were on milk but also this video is sponsored by Herdwatch for all your farm recording needs because we are dosing these now we are going to use Herdwatch to record the dosing so it's recorded there's no paperwork or anything involved just pop it into the phone and because of the dosing stuff we have is one big five liter tub that will do all the cows we have all we have to do is select we can go and filter the calves down to all the calves and we just select all and that's it done dusted we don't have to individually write down numbers we don't have to individually select calves once we're doing them all the one day we can just batch up the whole lot into the one and because the one tub will do them all oh just simplifies that whole record keeping job so this is what we're going to be dosing them with tar uh door torador torador pour on Dora Mecton, kindly provided by Midlockland's Farm Care in Cork. And I have to say, um, I was talking to, to have a vet or a kind of a, an advisor, a, an advisor when it comes to animal products and dose and stuff. And I was talking to him and he was asking me questions about our ivermectin resistance on the farm, how, how we dosed them before and all them kind of questions to see what product was going to be best for us. And not only did I learn something, he was telling me make sure that we dust the calves before we moved them onto clean paddock. We were moving them to clean paddock and then dosing them. And he says, wrong thing to do. Dose them, leave them for two or three days, then move them. Because if you move them the same day you dose them, they cough up and they get rid of all the worms and the, the eggs and stuff out of them, back onto the grass, only contaminating the new grass. So you want to do them before you move them. Learn something. He also suggested that the to, 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 Torador was the right product for us. It's going to uh, six weeks working. So you have six weeks coverage and then two weeks residual. So we get eight weeks coverage out of this, which is great. We're just in the end of June now. So that's going to get us to the end of August. So that means we're going to have all our winter combines cut, all our second cut silage cut. And it leaves us then in a bit of the lull period in between the start of the spring spring crop harvesting spring crops so it's it's a perfect product for us it's also only 15 mil a calf so five liters is going to do them all it just really did take the boxes and i could honest to god a really really good service to have and just to talk to someone that can advise you on what's the best product to use for your situation I'm really honest to god really really found it very helpful and we'll definitely be giving that man a ring back on more stuff but if you're interested Mudlockton's farm care in Cork you're ready to go on my arm with me gun and gloves and gloves nice orange gloves this is also blue so hopefully now if we can see it on the animals backs we won't need to get a spray marker and um, if we can't see it on the backs we'll have to get a spray marker really squirrel 
Oh, you can't see that on their back. Okay. advantages to this to pour on because you can do them while you feed them no putting them in or anything no stress so the calves you're looking at here are on milk kind of weaning them off now they are the worst of the worst of what we have now we had an awful awful issue um i know the last video I kind of made with the calves we had said we were getting on fierce well and we were we were flying it but then we had the tb test and but we had all these cows still in the shed and we had to corner them into the yard or corner them in the shed and go through them one at a time catching them and doing them and it put an awful lot of stress on the calves and heat stress and ever since that day it's like you could draw a line in the sand and from that day onward we got an awful lot of trouble and we lost quite a few calves particularly the bunch that was here when we put them out here and some of them come too and more of them didn't but we had awful awful issues as the very same thing happened last year when we dehorned them they were shut in to a corner and we done them one at a time and that caused us awful trouble and we know we are 110 percent sure now never ever 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 shut the calves into shut them up tight in the shed doing anything with them the, any stress on them at all just gives on to trouble and it did cost us now but luckily now what's left here i think is fairly safe but we did lose quite a lot of the jersey boys the jersey boys are just not as father phil said and i'm nearly sure i said it in the jersey boy video father phil and uncle said that when we used to make the pedigree jersey cows and we had the pedigree jersey bulls they were very very soft cattle and it did not take a lot to upset them and we could definitely see it after that day they they were the one they gave us quite a bit of trouble and there's there's not too many left is there live no no but look at it is what it is what can you do about it we had the tb test there was no way around it but it did cause us awful trouble. But anyway, as we get these fed, we'll dose them and we'll move on to the next lads. Here we have a mega batch of calves. And the speckle park is just after walking through the fence. But um, we put two batches together. So we had a batch the other side of the river and we had a batch here where we are now needs to be topped but we put all them together to eat the well field and these are all getting moved down to the big field the other side of the canal to keep the silent ground grazed um, to make sure that we can get all to come in at the one time with the whole crop because the time between first cut and the whole crop is too long for the grass to grow close to the stemmy so we want to leave it but anyway i'll put the camera up in time lapse we have our spray marker now to spray them because it's going to be quite difficult to get them all because there's a hundred calves there's a hundred calves here isn't there yeah. so anyways better give live a hand we'll put this down and we get these done So that's these calves done. Quite hard now. There's a hundred. Well, there might be a, just a hundred calves here, but there's a lot of calves here, and it's it's difficult. It is difficult to get around them all, but we have them done. Look at them yourself there. Calves are doing super, super well. These are you could say the mid. These would be the mid tier, but they are doing fierce well now. So we have to move the bulls out here onto the next paddock for them. So we're running a paddock system here for all the calves. All the cattle are on paddocks. So we keep them moving, try and keep them in fresh grass. It's the best way of making the most of your grass. It also helps with your worm burden, giving the cattle fresh paddocks all the time. That's why we do, especially with the calves. Because if you leave calves on the one pat field the whole time, it gets sick of them and they build up a really big burden of worms. And that's why we're dosing them. It's for the worms, in particular, the lung worms, hoose worms they are the boyo they'll give the calves if they get bad they give them hoose pneumonia and it'll just wipe them out 
and calves have a very poor resistance to worms whereas our older cattle have a better resistance and we don't have to do them as often if we do them once maybe twice in the year that'd be it whereas the calves get done quite regularly to try and combat that so here we are with the boys we were going to move them but there, there's still lots of grass here the problem we're having at the minute is our paddocks are just going way ahead of the cattle that's their next paddock out there it's in meta we can't mow it paddock after in meta can't mow it you can see the bit that's mowed up there that's another paddock we mowed the half of it and uncle Ian hit stones and broke stone guards and blades and so it's a little bit annoying one slightly disappointing thing the Belgian blue who's standing over there is quite small compared to some of the other bulls he's small which very disappointing and I thought the Belgian blue would have been done done better than that anyways that's them boys grazing away on the home farm no <laughs> frustrating trying to get them all. You get a little bit dizzy going round them. But it works. Anyways, this is the best batch of calves we have. These are the first ones that come off the feeder. And these are fantastic. These are huge. Compared to other years, these are huge calves. So we're really, really happy with how these have been doing. And hopefully they stay going so well. And we have literally had no issues with these at all. So we haven't. Um, yeah, no, these are the these are the best, the best calves we have, aren't they? Yeah. Just huge calves. You can see yourself there. Huge, huge calves. Nice bums. Nice square backs and really tall. Just doing really well. Oh, me toes! So, we're with the other boys now. Um, to have grass out there, I know I should be closer to them, but um, yeah, I just don't want to be opening and closing wires. Uh, we won't be seeing one batch of bullocks and one batch of heifers because Father Phil and Uncle, they're going to look at them. On the Herdwatch app, there is a heat detection part, which we're using to try and, every time we go up and we see Dolly, we spend a few minutes and see, is she coming in cycle, is she coming in heat? And then we're using the Herdwatch app to try and record that so that we can find out when she's cycling. So when we find out when she's cycling, when we bring her home, we know then we'd have a rough idea when she'll be coming in heat again so we can get her AI'd. We're, we're pretty sure we're gonna go down the AI route rather than bring her to a bull because we want to get a short, put a short bull on her and so far it seemed, it seemed to be very hard to find a short bull isn't it so here we have our angus bullocks and i think there's is there two herefords there's one or two hereford bullocks there as well and there's a a, a suspiciously frisiany looking animal that has an angus on the card there as well but ask them they are doing fantastically well i don't think we've ever had uh, angus bullocks yearling angus bullocks that have been so big they really really have done fantastically well compared to other years just really really happy with them so they're just grazing the back swarts of the silage ground before they head back to their paddocks it's a big cough isn't it yes as you can see one of the cows has done ferocious well this year where are you messing that's a bull the bulls are literally is the bull? he is a bull He's, the bulls are the other side there's a batch of bulls their side that head and unfortunately he decided he didn't like being with others. So he come to the calves. And now he gets meals, so we have to get him sorted when these get moved. These will be getting moved now in three days time. As we your man said, that'll be Liv's job as Liv is our farm manager. So she is. She's keeping the whole show on the road while we're busy 
getting everyone else's work done. So me red sp spray marker run out, so it's a little bit more difficult. That's a nice jersey. Yeah, so this is this is the first batch that had the first of the jerseys off make. So another one? You can see them there and they're not doing too bad at all, so they're not. They're just nicely pipping along. They're a little bit smaller than the others, but they're not too bad. They're, they're the best of what we have. So there. They're the best of the jerseys we have. Just that just starting to lose that nice brown colour, fawn coloured coat and starting to get the real bully coat. So and there. he's really hairy. Yeah. You can see it in the lad 531. And yeah. That's 539. 531 is there. You can see they're just starting to get that real bulliness about them. So they are. So we're in the last batch of calves. So these were the last batch to leave the farm. So we have another go of jerseys here. One, two, three, four, four. There could be more. We have an awful problem with calves in this batch. In particular, the speckled parks and the Belgian blues. Well, the one Belgian blue we have. Um, Uncle Ian is fully convinced the speckled parks cannot feel the electric fence, nor the Belgian blue. As you can see, live in the far corner there, she's gone to get them. There's one of the speckled parts coming. They keep going through the fucking hedge. We cannot get them to stop. We've 5,000 volts in the fence, like more than enough to stop them. But it doesn't seem to bat an eyelid on them at all. So, that is these calves done. That is all the calves dosed now. We have them dosed in like an hour. 300 plus calves. Still a bit left over in this, so we'll have some if we need it. But. Big thank you to Herdwatch for sponsoring today's video. Herdwatch app just makes life so much easier for recording your medicine and a whole lot of other stuff. A whole lot of other stuff, like I was saying earlier, the heat detection, missing tags, all that good stuff. We've been using it for four years now and we have a board B inspection coming up soon. And when it comes to that, that just makes my mother's life so much easier because all she has to do is print reports off the Herdwatch app and she has all everything that we've done in the recording end of things just print it off done dusted simplifies the whole job so it does but anyways big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video and big thanks to mclaughlin's farm care for looking after us with this and the advisor i really really honest to god it was a great service being able to talk to an advisor and seeing what was the best product that was available for what we needed it to do and the eight week cover on this six weeks working and two weeks residual is great because it gets us through the second cuts through the winter harvest winter harvest in the winter crops and gets us just before the harvesting of the spring crops so perfect perfect anyways look i'm going to leave it at that for today's video that is all the calves looked at so you get to see in a general overview apart from that the tb testing and how that kind of affect up the last 50 60 70 calves is in the shed other than that, the calves have been absolutely flying it. Really have been doing well. Some of the calves are, at this current stage, are as good as calves we put in other years in November. There's actually a video of us sorting 300 calves in the yard. And someone actually commented on it just to remind me that the calves didn't look very well in that video. And like the big best batch of calves are better than them calves we put in and we're like four months ahead, three months ahead of ourselves. So it's a huge difference. So it is a huge difference. In terms of grass growth and paddocks, grass is growing fierce well. We are in a wet area of the country and our ground is wet, so dry spells don't affect us too much. Our biggest trouble at the minute with the paddocks is grass going too strong ahead of cattle, not being able to cut it or do anything with it because of rough and stones. And that's, that's a big issue for us trying to keep our paddocks and grass management at the high level performance where we need it to be to get the best out of our cattle but that is a bit of a downfall for us at the minute hopefully over the next couple of years we'll be able to straighten that out between receding and leveling land and stuff but that all costs money and you know yourself there's not a whole lot in the job but anyways look we're going to leave it at that for today's video as always please like and subscribe to the channel videos every tuesday thursday and sunday that is it from us good luck <laughs>